please welcome Never Silly, Never Frilly, Always Billy Billinger. Good morning, Billy. <laughs> That's the best introduction I've ever had. <laughs> You're coming with me. <laughs> How are you, pal? I'm good, mate. All Thanks right, for inviting so, me. Um, we've had lots of love for you already. Uh, Benice in Corsham. A couple of WhatsApps from Benice this morning. Saw Billy at a recent Hoplite charity dinner. Uh, so many great stories. Um, I can't wait to hear him talk without using the F word. Good luck with that, Chris. Uh, <laughs> could you please tell him I'm still trying to get him a parador and the jump lights. He'll know what you mean. I know exactly what I mean. And thanks for reminding me. I'm going after them. I need that now. Right. What, is, what, what is that about? So basically, it's, it's the jump door from a C-130. The, the aircraft we used to jump out of right. and, and the lights the red and the red comes on you get ready green you jump out right out of the aircraft so I want that for my bar in my house oh wow so I can keep red light on straight into the bar is this bar out. a work in progress is it a new thing yeah it's a, it's a work in progress actually I've just got the house now so over the next few weeks I'll be uh, hopefully putting that right. door in will the tour pay for the house I mean is that the deal <sighs> it'll pay for part of it <laughs> <laughs> the bar. It might pay for the bar. Yeah. All right, well, let's give it a big plug. Okay, so this tour, apparently, it's going to be great. 27 dates, always a little further tour. Yeah. Fane, F A N E dot co dot UK forward slash Billy hyphen Billingham. Um, so, Billy, you've done so much, man. Congratulations on oh, your life, you. um, all the things you've seen. Thank you for your service as well. I really appreciate, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, out of all the things you've done, geez, all the license you've, you've got, all the qualifications you do, to do all these different things, you know, pre and, and during and post uh, your service years. Tell us about, like, can you give us, I don't know, something useful, a hack from jungle warfare and navigation and tracking? Give us just what can, you know, if we find ourselves in that situation this afternoon, the, what's, what's the, the biggest, best? Stay calm. Stay calm. Don't panic. Never panic. Take a breath and go, you know, what? I'm here. Own where you are. I get it. Now think, uh, I'm, I'm going to get out of it. What can I do about it? Because you're there. So it is. It's because people get, find themselves in a place where they're not familiar, uncomfortable, uh -huh. and they're, they're just going to a panic. So everything else becomes clouded around that. So stop, take a breath. This is where I'm. Whether I'm in the desert, I'm in the jungle, I'm in a situation almost about to have a fight, whatever it is. Take a breath, get some clarity make a decision wow and so, so obviously breath work is important there yeah Do you, have you been trained in no, how to I slow mean, the heart rate down to be honest with you, i'll tell you what i've started doing through training because i'm working with the seals a lot the american seals seal team um they do this thing the seal team breathing uh square box, br they call, box breathing box breathing yeah yeah so i've started doing that and it, it does make a difference right demolition and sabotage um if we find ourselves in that Yep. particular pickle before tea time tonight what, what, what I might can we blow do the there? doors off for you mate no worries <laughs> yeah simple as that alright good excellent um, mountaineering rock climbing abseiling and ice yep. climbing you're an instructor in all that yes which is weird <laughs> you know what so when I went to the SES yes I went to mountain troop I never wanted to go to, I got sent to mountain troop right I'd never climbed anything but stairs so it was a, a complete new world to me and then I found naturally I could climb but I was dangerous but then I had to learn all the techniques so my job in the regiment was mounting troops. So anything over, you know, like the hills of Afghanistan or Bosnia or whatever it was, we'd lead. We'd, we'd take the lead on it. So you needed to be trained in everything from rock climbing to skiing to mountaineering. So, so, yeah. so this, this rock climbing, yeah. um, you know, and this, this free solo climbing, this being belayed and this, that and the other. But if people, if we're walking up things, so I've got a, a run in a couple of weeks time, which has a cumulative 5,000 uh, foot elevation, yeah. which is, it's, it's, you know, it's more than an amble. Any tips for just walking up things? I mean, safety we, first, for sure. You know, right. making sure that you're on a good track and you know where you are going, especially if the, the, the weather comes in. But it's just... But I mean, arms and leaning forward or yeah, what? Slight, slightly, I always say going up and slightly leaning forward and just focus on something rather than looking at the top and going, oh my God, I've got to get all the yeah, way up yeah, and yeah, burning yeah. energy. Look at something forward and think about what something different to what you're actually doing. When you're, you, your feet are on the ground in that situation. Yeah. So so what I, somebody told me the, 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 a couple of months ago, it's changed the way I run and walk and climb now. Yeah. You know, I used to be somebody who reached with my, the, the, the foot that was that I was stepping out with, reach with that. Yeah. And I say, no, push off the push foot off the that's front, on the ground. Push off the yeah, yeah. Game changer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, use, use that to your advantage. Let that put, take you forward, the momentum of that push off the forward part. And it foot. feels better. It yeah, feels yeah. more natural. Um, all right, what else are you, you up to? So um, combat survival, RTI instructor, yeah. uh, pat uh, patrol medic, trauma life support. Yes. I mean, you are the man to have around. <laughs> well, it's not just me. That is everybody in the regiment. You have to be taught. Us. Actually, you know, when I did my medical course, right. I ended up working here at the Royal London for a month as a doctor. 
and that was interesting, you know, because there's so much goes on around a city this size, everything from shooting to... In fact, it was a time, I don't know if you remember the story, when the guy thought he was a lion and jumped in the lion cage in London. Yes, do you I remember do that? remember, yeah. I was actually at the hospital when he came in. So that was my time of, after being trained as a medic and seeing all that sort of stuff and... Wow. trauma but are it was you, great your journey i mean is this what you know as a teenager as a kid is this yeah. what is this the life kind of life you intended no not at all the, the 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 military saved my life chris i was a i was a road kid and that's what the tour's about i talk about all the lessons learned trials tribulations things i'm proud of things i'm not and all for it to change kids lives like today all going rogue i was going rogue i got stabbed at 15 you know in a gang stupid fighting and, and getting and then the army changed me I joined the cadets and I, I, I loved what the cadets was about. Everything they were teaching me, I could relate to medical navigation. It all made sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't ap- I know, academic. It's interesting. Yeah. So then I, thought, I saw the light. I thought the military's for me. That art discipline is what I need. And it was. And the day I joined the military, I looked at these people in front of me and thought, you know what? I had so much respect for the people stood in front of me because of who they are and what they were. And I said to myself, the way I feel about that person in front of me, I want people to feel that about me, not mm. that idiot from Warsaw who can fight and get in trouble, you know? So the military was, that's what it was for me. And then all of a sudden this new world opened up to me, challenging and I thought, I, I can do this. You know, I, I looked at it like everybody else, I thought, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. And then all of a sudden, weeks down the line, I'm still there, loads have gone. And it gave me inspiration to keep going. Yeah, yeah. And then years later, so I did nine years with the Parachute Regiment, which was amazing, you know, fantastic unit. And I thought, where do I go next? And the SAS. So how does how does that happen? Because you do, t- they talk about espionage and people getting a tap on the shoulder, depending on what university they went to, yeah. whatever. So say you're a para, you're a su- successful para. Yeah. Uh, you signed up for, you were, you were nine years in, how long were you signed up for? 22. So you, so you know you're in for a while, you can yeah. buy your way out, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But you just feel like there's an itch that you want to scratch. Yeah. What do you do next? So, I mean, you don't really know a lot about the special forces until you're in the military. And then, you, again, you, you know they're there. You don't know what they're doing unless you've had people, friends of yours that have gone before you. You meet up and they tell you. So I think it's like anything. You, you feel like you've reached your ceiling right. at some point and you go, right, where do I go next? You know, being in the parachute regiment nine years, a frontline soldier, which I loved, then all of a sudden at some stage I'm going to end up flying a desk. That's not me. Mm. I was still too young. I thought, I need another challenge. Where do I go? I'll go to the SAS. I'll give that a go. But then it was like nine years into my military career starting all over again. Yeah. Because now there's 283 of us all fighting for a position to get in the SAS. One position? Well, seven of us got through out of 283. Yeah, yeah. And And that's... How does that compare to the the, US, the Navy SEALs? Is it a similar kind of dropout? Or? It's, no, I, I don't think so. I'd, I'd be wrong to say exactly because I don't know. But, I mean, I think they have massive numbers compared to us. And, they're, they're, I mean, their unit is like the size of our army. Right. You know, where the SAS is tiny. And, I mean, really tiny. I'm going to say what the numbers are, but it's ridiculously small. So it, it, it's not quite the same. And they have that famous week down there in the middle of um, SAS, uh, sorry, night SEALs training, which is called Hell Week. Hell Week, yeah. Do you have an, a, a, an equivalent in the SAS? You have Hell everything. <laughs> just just, hell just start hell, to finish. Welcome to hell. You, know, you literally get to the end, and I remember at the oh, end, oh mate, I'd, God. I'd lost about two stone. I was, I was absolutely... There's nothing of you anyway. No, and I was like, I don't care if I passed a fell. I ain't doing that again. Really? <laughs> yeah. How, how, how many weeks? Uh, it's six months. Six months. Yeah, and, and it's it, relentless. D- there's no no let up? No, there, there is, but the pressure's on all the time. Cause you, and one of the hardest things about it is you're being pushed physically, mentally and emotionally right. all the time. You're being tested and there's no um, encouragement or decouragement. So yes. you'd never really know. And that's the hardest thing. When you're thinking, did I just screw that up? Yeah. And they're just looking at you with the same poker face all the yeah. way through. And what they're looking for is a person who deals with that. They want you to make a mistake because mm. you're going to be on your own. You're going to make mistakes, but it's how do you recover from Breaking it? Breaking point. Yeah. Do you let that take control of you and you go to, <sighs> to rats? Or do you take the breath, stay calm? You know what? Done. I'll learn from it move forward. And that's what they're looking for. And if, and that's in your mind as a recruit <laughs> as you're going through is, has he seen me do that? Am I, have I, am I going to get all the way to the end? He's going to fail me because I've made a mistake there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you never know. Oh and, and that's the hardest thing. That's when people just lose it and go, you know what? So I'm you done. so so you went in as what? 
in the military service, what was the first thing you went in as? I was in. I went in as a young uh, infantry paratrooper. So, so infantry, then paratrooper. No, it, infantry parachute regiment. Parachute so regiment. Okay. The infantry is a number of sort of units. Right. The parachute regiment is the elite of the infantry. Right. Then SAS. Then the SAS. And 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 that was SAS till the end. Yeah. Yeah. I finished my career in the SAS in the journals. Right. Now uh, I've been to Cyprus where there's decompression. You know, it's very yeah. important, isn't it? There's that beach there where people go, yeah. and you just have to decompress if you've been in active service for 24, 48 hours. And it, that really is quite useful. Yeah. I would imagine. I've been told that first Well, that's new because that, that wasn't when I left. Right. We were talking about that. And I always said, we should have a decompression coming out of Afghanistan, out of Iraq yeah. or Syria, wherever they are. And I always said Africa. Because in and amongst nature and animals, people yeah. are different beasts around animals. Everybody, no matter who you are, you become more relaxed. Yeah. And, and I always said, come out of a place like Baghdad or wherever it is after that hard tour, generally you've lost people, so you've got a lot on your plate. Yeah. Go there for a week as as the gang, decompress with each other, poke each other in the chest, say what you really want to get off your chest. Yeah, yeah. unpack then, it. And then bring the family out. Yeah, oh, right. Because when you go home and you take all that baggage with you, the ones who suffer are the family. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I hope they're doing something. Now, you just mentioned Cyprus. I hope that's what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Something along those lines. But when I left, it, it, I didn't do any of that. So, so the first couple of years after you came out of service, yeah. what was that like for you? Hardest days of my life. Really? You, you do. You become... In, I knew. I was in, institutionalised. I loved what I was doing. I knew where the dentist was. I knew where my bed was. I knew where my food was. I knew where my money was. Yeah. I left the army. I needed a job. It's All crazy. of a sudden, you've gone from a king to nothing yeah yeah no one knows you no one cares about you really I was like it was daunting nobody knows your story it was really daunting me and I even just going to the dentist I nearly end up in a fight because the guy goes yeah you've got to register I went what do you mean register yeah yeah and he goes come back in a month I went I need to see a dentist now yeah yeah so I was adapting to that but then I had to get a job so I've gone from this life of being under the radar no one knows who I am I'm not even on electoral roll because of the job I was doing to I need a job. And the first job I get is with Celebrity Bodyguard, as a bodyguard. <laughs> I'm now on every magazine and I'm like, how do I deal with this? I was... I was Pretty is so secret. <laughs> Mate, to so, that's so funny. I, know, I was so comfortable with having an RPG or a rifle pointed okay, at me, you're on the but front. not a camera. All right, what was the first magazine you saw yourself on the front of? Well, I'll tell you the truth, mate. I was, I was moonlighting, right? So I was finding my feet. I was about to leave the regiment and I'll get a job. I get sent out. I think I, would, I, I was at Cairns or somewhere. And I'm walking down the red carpet and I think, actually, I'm still in the military. And I, and the, the boss of the, the regiment and the, the adjutant, who was a good friend of mine, Dale, they're, they're in Baghdad and, and they're watching the TV in Baghdad. And there's me walking down the, and the boss goes, that's Billy Billingham. Yeah. <laughs> and Dale, my mate, goes, no, it's his brother. He just looks yeah, like him. he's not signed yeah. out yet. Jeez. So it was really daunting. Who were you so with hard. the first time there? Uh, that was with Brad and Angie, so oh he was a little God. bit. The first person I was oh, so on. So how did you get that gig then? What, how, how did that happen? A friend of mine, ex regiment, had set up a business doing celebrity body or oh, bodyguarding for high profile people, governmental right. people. So he had a company, and he said, "When you leave, he says, look, I've got work for you if you want to do it." And he, that's where the moonlighting became. He said, "Look, I've got a small gig. Do you want to go and have a look at it? Yeah, go yeah. and do it. See if you like it." So I did it, and I thought, "Yeah, all I had to do." I, I thought, well, "What do I have to offer?" I had a lot to offer because of the work I'd done. It was just about toning it down. I was going to say, because it's a level. different yeah. skill, isn't it? Yeah. So, so you know, t your toolkit is more than very handy in that situation. Yeah. But I've I've been, um, un you know, in the under the security of such people as yourself in the past. Yeah. Not so much nowadays at all, but in the past, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and they've never, ever got into an ounce of trouble because in their minds, they would have failed at their job yeah. if they haven't... I've seen them put things off yeah. in on my behalf mm -hmm. but it was never to do with physical conflict so that is a different kind of thing yeah. What? so who taught you that and what did they teach you I taught myself I mean I'd, I'd done security at the highest level you know in Iraq Af literally saving people's lives right. and, and having to deal with really hostile situations so now all those skills you've got you've got to adapt it to the new client like yourself What? what what's your threat is your public image Yeah. how you behave and you know so you don't People don't. Sometimes we're our own worst enemy. Yeah, we are. And and my job is to make sure that you can be the child you want to be without everybody else knowing. Right. To keep it out of the limelight. So really, that's a, there, is a, there is a threat to you. There's always somebody who wants their 15... So it's 15. about perspective. Yeah. So it's this, and, and laying it down to what do I need to do? Right. Now, you're right. I can roll around the floor with whoever you want. No big deal. I might win, I might not. But if I'm rolling around the <laughs> floor... <probably> would win. <laughs> Yeah, if I'm rolling around the floor, that means you're vulnerable. I'm not doing my job. Yeah, yeah. My job is to avoid rolling around the floor. 
Well, thank you for not rolling around the floor uh, on behalf of um, who is it? Uh, Brad Pitt, Michael Caine, Tom Cruise, Russell Crowe. Yeah. I bet. I mean, I I bet the you know that company there. You got you got Tomb Raider. She, she's going to love a yeah. bit of what you've got because she she's she's she will have been trained in things dis- yeah. not dissimilar to what what you're an expert in. And so would the other boys: Tom Cruise, Russell Crowe, uh, Brad Pitt, Michael Caine. I bet they yeah. loved the chat, didn't they? Oh, I loved it, mate. I mean, it's funny because you realise, you know, the life you've lived. They'll, they'll ask you a question about a place and you think, yeah, you, I'll start answering it. And I got to the point where I thought, I need to shut up here because I just sound like I've done everything. Yeah. And really you have compared to th- these sort of people because, you know, they do a lot, but they, it's pretty sheltered what they have to do because yeah, of their profile. it's shallower, you yeah. know. And the thing is, you know, you, you've you've gone as vertical as, as uh-huh. most, more than most human beings ever will, thank God. Yeah. Because hopefully... Cause... I mean, I've been fortunate. I've been very fortunate yeah. the path of... of gone down it could have been so different you look very well my friend you oh, clearly you, look after yourself what's your what's your current regime mate i train every day if i can what, what kind of stuff i get up in the morning and run i don't see running as fitness i just see it as the setting the, the sort of I days agree. it's a jog love it i don't i'm out of being challenged now i challenge myself mm. i'm too old for that now i can do it i don't want to do it so i'll go for a run in the mornings most mornings that sets me off then i'll do a little bit of cardio a little bit of boxing training whatever it is yeah and that starts me for the day if i don't do it i feel guilty all yeah. day you about feel twitchy it. as well about yeah i do and i get a little bit ratty i don't try i don't try not to train in the afternoons because i feel like i've already lost the drive i'm with you yeah so i'm up in the morning bang well not, begun is half done yeah no food no water yeah. no music just do it get out get on with it. that's what i've always been trained to do you know no side Think about what you're doing and get on with it. So, so this show it. of yours, um, it's, yeah. it sounds brilliant. Have you done any yet? Yeah, I've been doing it for the last few years, mate. All oh, right, so you've done yeah. th- these before. Yeah. Forgive me. All right. So, so it's got a nice rhythm to it. And... Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally my journey. And I, I love, I look in the audience and I think it's everything from a 16-year-old kid or a 15-year-old to an 85-year-old. Of course. And I think, why are, you, why are you here? And then I get the old people going, that was so inspirational. Wow. To hear somebody like that. And you, like I say to people, and I was just talking to James, my agent, about this, he said, well, you should tell them what it is. Well, what is it? And I always say, I'll let you decide whether it's inspirational, motivational, or just interesting. Right. But I'll take you on this journey, and everybody will pick a piece of that journey that they can relate to and go, you know what? I know what you're talking about there. And it's interesting because I come off stage, and there's always X amount of people waiting to come to me and say, are. I've listened to your story, and you've saved my, and which is the best paycheck ever. When somebody comes to you and says, look, you've helped me get through this dark space, you know and I know. Yeah, of course. It's, it's a great thing. So, and I get there all the time. So. Yeah, that queue of people yeah. wanting to thank you yeah. um, is so is such a really big deal. I've been to meetings that where a similar thing happens at yeah. the end of every meeting. And, you know, you don't have to queue up and say thank you, but most people do. Yeah. And, you know, you queue in line for 45 minutes or an hour, and all I ever say is just thank you. But the queuing is part of the whole thing because yeah. you can, you know, whilst you're in that queue, you're reflecting on what's just happened. It's all part, you know, people who, who turn up at the last minute to watch somebody do something brilliant and leave at the first possible minute, you're not getting your money's worth, really. Yeah. It's about the whole thing, being immersed yeah. in the whole thing. Yeah. It's not just stood there listening to a story. It's, it's the, the, you, exactly, it's the whole experience yeah, of yeah. being right. there. Right, well, you've got life. another series of your brilliant um, SAS Who Dares Wins coming yep. up. Do you have any advice, should, for example, um, future <laughs> contestants uh, be listening? They know who they are already. If they are listening to this now, are you allowed to give them hints before they go into the show? Simply, be yourself, be honest, and give it your best shot. Right, imp- can they do anything to prepare to be on the show? Um yeah, drop any barriers that they may be coming with, egos. Right. Just say to yourself, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's a passage in time. Wow. If thanks. you take that bit of information, it's a passage in time, whether you're there a day or 10 days or whatever it is, just get the most out of it. Expect to be uncomfortable because we break it, not break, I never say break it down. We peel you back physically, mentally, emotionally, you deprive you of sleep because then you see somebody's true character. Yeah. You will find out who you really are. Be prepared for that. And um, let me ask you this. If any mums and dads are listening now yeah. or any guardians or any uh, uh, aunties and uncles, uh, real or imagined, um, any advice if they're having a tough time with a teenager, especially yeah. a, a frustrated teenage boy? Confront it. Don't hide it. Don't, don't make excuses. Be very honest and, and tell the truth. And explain, you know, why the situation they're in is happening. You know, because we're all, we're in this world of somebody, it's always somebody else's fault. Own it. If you're going through a dark patch, why, ask yourself why. Be honest about it. Confront it. 
and then do something about it. And so as a kid, you know, you said you were yeah. stabbed when you were 15 years old. You were in a gang, part of yeah. the gang culture. You know, it's, it's to, 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 um, to a civvy, to a normie yeah. like, like me, it's, it seems ironic. It clearly isn't. But it seems ironic that the least, on the face of it, disciplinable teenagers... Mm that fall in love with the army where it's only about discipline. Mm. So so where is the cognitive... I, I think it's it, it's the parenting. Right. Because, you know, having kids, he, he, people look at me and go, oh, well, his, his kids must be so... My kids can bend me around my finger. Yeah, yeah. But they can't bend my friends around my yeah. finger. Like, my, my mate's kids point. are listening to That's me. Such but such a good point. It's true. It's all... Get somebody close to you to, to help discipline the kids. Gosh. But you've just got to be straightforward with them. You have. And it, it's hard to... Like, my dad was... Why is that? My dad was six foot four. He was hard as nails, mate. Honestly. But you and were out of control. He couldn't control me. That's interesting. He could not control me. Half the time he was working anyway. And, and the other reason is I knew how to play him. And I did play him. It's like, I start my talk off with exactly that as a kid. From nine years old, I knew what was right and wrong. Of course, I let my mum stand behind me and go, he got in with the wrong crowd. And in my head, I'm going, I am the wrong crowd. And I knew that. And I think if, if I'd have owned up to it back then, I'd have never got to the point of getting stabbed. Getting stabbed was the final straw in my life of, I need to get a grip on myself. Wow. I was lucky. Unfortunately, a lot of people ain't lucky. Yeah, yeah. So I would say to kids out there, don't get to that stage. Own who you are, be very honest. There's nothing wrong with being a naughty kid. It's part of growing up. Of course it is. Knock a door, run job, off, dive it? over an edge. But when, <laughs> when you're impacting somebody else's life or hurting somebody, stop. Because yeah, okay. the biggest pain for me was when I opened my eyes and looking at my mum and dad around the, the hospital table who thought I was going to die, yeah. seeing the pain in their eyes yeah, yeah. and what I put them through. God, you're good. He's good, isn't he? <laughs> wow, that's how you follow Kate Winslet with Billy Willingham. Oh, um, seriously. We just said before we saw Kate. That's great. Yeah. Fane.co.uk, F A N E.co.uk slash forward slash Billy hyphen Billingham for tickets. Who doesn't want to go and see this man talking about everything that's important in life? You're going to Bristol. This is uh, October. The tour starts in October. Bristol and Yeovil and Poole, Wrexham, Shrewsbury, Yarm, Walsall, Ilkley, Hull City. Fareham, Salisbury, Barnstable, Exeter, Dunstable, London, Norwich, Tunbridge Wells, High Wycombe, Folkestone, Newbury, Corby, Chatham, Aldershot. Aldershot. <laughs> it's got to be sold out, hasn't it? Uh, Newark, Lancaster, Salford Key, Kings Lynn. Brilliant, mate. Great to meet yeah. you. Chris, you're a legend, man. Wow, Thank you. what a bomb. <laughs> what a bomb. Control <laughs> round of applause, please. Mate, Chris. Woo! Cheers, pal. Well done, mate.